Okay. Allison and Lucy? Yep. So as soon as Andrew's done, you're coming up. Alright. Lewis? I'll do it today, I guess. Okay, okay. so you're right after them. Okay. So when you want me to advance the slide, just say something. I said if you want to go to the next slide, tell them, like, next. Grading paper here. Thank you. Awesome day. You and I'm just going to do it without the pictures that everybody else. Okay, before you start, hit, hit the start button on the... Mikey already did. Okay. Uh, women in World War One. We'll be talking about what women did in the war and how they changed society. When men got sent to war and women were left back in the United States, there weren't enough people to work, so women had to take over many of the men's jobs to keep their families starting. As other women in the U.S. made changes to working bigger jobs, African American women did as well. Many companies in the U.S. depend on women to work for them because they didn't have men to work. Women learned to work in places such as hospitals, offices, factories, and even working as nurses nurse corps in the Army and Navy. The U.S. and their allies wanted to improve their communication, so General John P. Pershing got women together that spoke English and French to serve as telephone switchboard operators, soon called the Hello Girls, but when they returned home, they didn't get any recognition until 1977. Next. How women changed society. Once the work at the WSPU, Women's Social and Political Union, and the NW. NUWSS, National Union of Women's Suffrage, decided to take matters in their hands and demand that women should get the right to serve. Women were able to vote in several states in 1917. Women who joined the war during shorthanded times were called union, non commissioned officers. They would earn $25 per month with the same responsibilities as men. 20,000 people were women. That women were able to join the UN men ring in 1916 to show that what women could do and women could do that women could and can do anything that men can do. Today there are so many people fighting for equality and suffering. Women of uh, many races and ages have helped society and young girls grow confident in themselves. Problems. Women were often used in the news and propaganda stories so that people would know who the men in the war were defending. Women in posters were also used as a reward for the men who would come back from the war, which promoted men to join the war for them. They were constantly sexualized, especially today, women of all races and ages are sexualized. Next. Why we picked this topic? We picked this topic because without the recognition of these women, Women would have been treated the same way as they are today and affected the whole future of women. We, what we learned. We learned that women did many things that we didn't know, such as serving in the army. It's a big deal that women served in the army because they weren't treated equally during World War I. Them serving in the army showed that they could do, also do many other things to help our country. section on this is supposed to be any problems you guys encountered in doing the report. So, were there any problems you guys encountered in doing the report? Um, the only problems we had were um, contacting each other and finding good times to work on it. Any questions?
but firing a large number of bullets in all directions, which was very effective against the charge of enemy soldiers. Its rapid fire wasn't like any weapon on the battlefield because it was because it was able to fire 400 to 600 bullets per minute, making it extremely hard for any soldier to make it past no man's land alive. Next. On September 6, 1915, the first prototype tank was invented in England. The prototype was nicknamed Little Willie. Tanks were first used in combat on September 15, 1916 at the Battle of Solon, where the British launched a major offensive to capture the village of Coralette. Tanks were superior to about any force in World War I because they were able to cause massive damage and had thick armor protecting them from machine gun and rifle fire. Next. Military aircraft. Military aircraft was first used for reconnaissance to scout out any positions past the trenches. Then they started to put machine guns on the planes that start dogfights. After that, they started to put bombs on zeppelins so they could bomb strategically important targets such as cities. For example, Germany's campaign against London, which Included more than 50 raids. However, this campaign had a fa heavy cost because Germany lost 77 out of their 115 aircraft, but the bomb damage killed nearly 700 people and injured about 2,000 people. Uh, chemical, chemical warfare. On April 22nd, 19. 15, the first major gas attack happened when the Germans fired 150 tons of chlorine gas against two French divisions at Ypres, Belgium. Immediately after the German attack on Ypres, Britain and France developed their own chemical weapons to shoot back at the Germans. Then in 1917, mustard gas was invented by the Germans, which blistered skin, eyes, and lungs, killing thousands. Also in 1917, the United States entered the war, also making chemical weapons. Henry S. Truman was the, cap was the captain of the U.S. artillery, which fired chemical weapons against the Germans in 1918. In all, 100,000 tons of chemical weapons were used, and 30,000 people died from it. Depth charges. Depth charges were used for one purpose, and that purpose was to take out an enemy submarine. During World War I, German U-boats were terrorizing British shipping, so the British invented the depth charge.
canister filled with explosives that rolled off the back of the ship, plunging into the water and exploding at a certain depth. The depth charge rarely exploded close enough to sink an enemy submarine, for it sent shockwaves that damaged the submarine. This forced the sub uh, submarine to submerge, which then could be destroyed by gunfire. Sources, Britannica.com, uh, History Channel, and the book. I chose this topic during World War I because it was the beginning of modern day military equipment. I think I spent about three hours on this project. I didn't really face any problems. Any questions? So our topic was what kids did during the war. Next slide. Um, so this is what a typical school looks like. Um, there are some students in a classroom and a lunchroom. Um, you could graduate from the ages 12 to 14. They would learn to read and write, and they um, like band speaking German. Next, Next slide. Um, children got some of the sicknesses that the soldiers got. They got, they all wanted to like help in the war and fight for their country and, and some did by learning about their age. Next slide. Kids at home plant vegetables and other food to keep the soldiers fighting in the war, just basically like to help them out. Um, the government is also protecting kids to say the word sauerkraut and instead they call it um, liberty cabbage. They're also providing blankets and other helpful objects to keep soldiers safe and healthy. Mm -hmm. Next slide. What's this graph about? The resources that they used and how, um, how much they used them. What's the future addition? What's the ZJ? They had a music hall where like the audience would go and sing songs and stuff and they would have ventriloquists and magicians would use the hall to like for, um, make fundraisers for the people at war and they played like hopscotch, four square, jump rope, and chess. Um, we chose this because it was a fun topic to learn more about what kids did during the war. For example, you usually wouldn't think about what the kids did, so we chose this to find out more things that we didn't know, uh, didn't know too much about. We spent about one hour for it, like, where we were looking it up, typing it up, and creating our slides. We found your information from Google and your notes. Next slide. Um, we didn't have too many problems, but it was just uh, hard to find some information that we wanted since it's such a small topic that they didn't really pay attention to what the kids did. Yeah. I
this is average lives during the world. Oh, I accidentally <laughs> added another one. Old World War I. So the reason why I chose this topic, I just simply wanted to know more about it. Um, I didn't have any problems since I did this on my own. And I took a while on it, about seven or eight hours. And then a short little description is showing the lives of everyone during World War I. Next slide. So the first topic is men, this one's short. Uh, they didn't have average lives because they went off to war far away from their families. Next slide. Uh, oh. uh, the next topic is women. So women were taking different roles like war production and agriculture because men weren't around to do them. They were in the war. And at around 1917, they made a decent amount of the workers there being around 30%. Next slide. And uh, they mostly did all of the male roles by then, and usually doing work that would contribute to the war. Next slide. The third topic, children. So children had tough times because they didn't have their fathers around and maybe even their, their brothers if they were old enough, because they were off to war. And they were taught in school, so they would have awareness. Next slide. Because of the war, more children were working on war forces. And if their moms were already working on things in the war, they would be doing fundraising activities and organizing their eggs. Next slide. Egg collection is really important to egg mm -hmm. I just found a website. And children were trying to take quiet than everything around the war to make it a bit better for everyone and helping as much as they could. So, quick summary, overall, the average life changed a lot because of the war. And it wasn't a great change because women and children had to work on things for the war. Men went to war and yeah, it was tough. So we didn't really go over in class rules about slideshows, did we? Tell me some rules about slideshows. They have to be decently long. What makes slideshows interesting? 
the the interesting transition. Lucy, pictures, pictures make slideshows interesting. I, I so the majority of a slideshow should be what? Pictures. Pictures. The majority. How many words should you put on a slide? Not very many. Not very many. <coughs> Just bullet points. Because when somebody looks at the, all those words, automatically what goes in your mind? Oh, it's a Okay. So all the words you put on there should be just stuff you're doing what? Talking about. Talking about. So you show the picture and then you talk about that picture. You show this picture and you talk about that picture. Okay. So that's the, the key. And for sure, you don't want to just read your slides. Okay. Um. But again, we didn't go over this, so we didn't practice it, but that's for future reference. We need to remember that, okay? Yeah. Why don't you want to read your slides? So you're telling people they can't read. That's one thing. You're insulting your audience saying, well, you can't read, so I need to read it to you. What's the biggest reason? Again, slideshows, presentations are supposed to be what? Fun. Interesting, right? Yeah. If I read to you, so if I read everything, so you already think Mr. Hell's boring. What if I read everything? That'd be boring. That would be even more boring. That's Isn't it more boring? Because the I don't know. I'm not the English. Is it boringer or more boring? It's more boring, but boringer sounds more interesting. Did you did you go gra grab what you printed, Ben? Yeah. Okay, and so you put it in a pile back there, then. Lucy, did you turn in your test? Mm -hmm. Now? Okay. With the proper attachment, we had some problems attaching documents, I think. So let's see what I don't have from people. You guys are pretty good. Claire, I still don't have your chapter 11 in religion sheet. Um, I have and Christian, you still haven't given me your test for chapter 11. Are you staying after school today, Christian? I don't think so. For sure. Again, those tests I need, otherwise I count. Uh, or you'll have to take it tomorrow without help. Now... Which period are we moving on to? What happens after that? Well, first of all, we have what happened after the war. We know that Wilson tried to do what? He wanted the League of Nations, right? And he didn't get it because why? They weren't interested. We wanted to get back what the term is return to normalcy. Mm -hmm. What was normal? Uh, no war. No, 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 normal is war, right? No. <laughs> Maybe in some other country. <laughs> so post war, we're talking immediately, okay? After the war, these things always happen. There's always going to be a recession. A recession is a temporary business reduction. That means the economy goes down. And um, why? Why does the economy? The war Okay. Because first of all, all these contracts that the companies had were canceled. Okay, they cancel them because they don't need to make all these weapons and and uh, machinery and tanks and stuff like that. They're not doing that anymore. So that company's going to lose what? They're going to lose money, business, okay? 
Unemployment happens because what? Same thing happened in the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. The pandemic, we had a recession because why? Um, People weren't using stuff as much. Okay, so they didn't have companies slowed down. So companies had to let people off. If you were a restaurant, what happened? You were gone. Okay. They, most of their workers and restaurant workers had to be let off. Okay. So, and then also you had a rise in prices. Always happens. Why would there be a rise in prices? I know, but let's say I'm buying something. Why would the price of something cost more? Because what happened during the war? Could I buy anything I wanted? No. Why? Because it's for the um, soldiers. Yeah, it was for the soldiers. They were in there. So after the war, I want to what? Buy I want to buy lots of stuff. I've been saving money all throughout the war. I'm saving all these things, kind of like after Lent. How many of you have already done your, your Lent and thing you gave up? <laughs> How many overdid your Lent and thing you gave up? I mean, so uh, let's say I gave up ice cream, so then I had a whole gallon bale of it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that's what happened really after wars. People go on a spending spree. Wow. And the law of supply and demand does. What happens if people have a great demand, they want to buy everything, what happens? Oh, price goes up. You can charge if the demand is great, the price can go way up for something. If the demand is low, what? Price goes way down. Okay. Also, you saw lots of strikes happening. Why? What's a strike? Not what I usually bowl. <laughs> Any bowlers in here? I like bowling. I like bowling. I like bowling. I don't do it very much. Like yeah, I'm doing okay. Okay. I still have it. Sorry. I still have the points on that card. Well, at least we have some interaction, some voicing. This is not that kind of strike. This strike is what? Bad. Greta? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so you refuse to work. You refuse to work till you get better wages. So why do we have a bunch of strikes after the war, not during the war? Um. No one's gonna pretend to you during the war because they're gonna want to take him from the war. And and they would say if I'm going on strike during the war, that means I'm kind of being what? I'm patriotic. I'm being selfish. You're only worried about you and you know, that soldiers over there risking their lives, and you and you want to get more money. So, but you didn't have strikes during the war. Plus, plus you had Congress controlling a lot of that. So after the war, okay. Then the third, second thing that happened was the Red Scare. Okay, what's the Red Scare? Sounds like it's red. Scary. You know, a lot of you could have got all the answers on the test because I had all these notes on the bottom. How many actually looked at my notes on the website to do your test? I looked at some of them. Yeah, on the Google page, all the notes were right there. You just had to go to the notes. Oh, wow, there's the answer. Pretty much. There's only a couple of them, and I told you those in the review. So. If you would have took notes during the review. Okay. The Red Scare is fear of communists taking over. Why would they be afraid of communists taking over? Because they're weak, strong. Yeah, but why after the war? Because what happened in 1917, besides us entering the war? We all died. Russia pulled out and they had a what? Revolution. Revolution. And who took over Russia? Uh, Soviet Union. 
It became the Soviet Union because who took over? The communists took over. Russia became a communist country called the Soviet Union. So they're saying, if that's going to happen in Russia, it could what? It could happen in the U.S. So people were freaking out. Communists are going to come in and take over. So anything that was unusual or foreign, that's what this xenophobia is. We had this term before. This fear of immigrants or fear of foreigners. That rose up. The KKK rose up again. When was the first time the KKK came out? Right after the Civil War. What's that period called? We're going to have a hard time on the final. Reconstruction. Reconstruction. Okay. But again, after World War I, the KKK made another. Membership went way up in the KKK again. Again, the KKK came in because of fear. When people are fearful, they do more radical things. And that's why the African Americans that saw better rights over in Europe when they were fighting the war. In fact, they got all kinds of medals from France and Great Britain to the black regiments. And they came back when they were treated over in Europe like heroes. They came back to, to the United States and they're treated like what? Well, pretty much like dirt. So if you're an African American after World War I and you came back, you're treated like, oh boy, come here, boy. Don't be uppity. You know, they were prejudiced, they were lynched, they were uh, segregated again. All the terrible things that we, you know, we're still in the process of doing, okay? We got the big trial going on in Minneapolis. Everybody's afraid that what's going to happen. More riots are going to happen. Yeah. See, but this is going way back to 19. When did the war end? Uh, oh, this is right after the war. Okay. Wilson tried. We said he had a stroke doing it, so they had it. The new president was elected, Warren G. Hardy, and his whole campaign was this: return to normalcy. That means get back to the way things were. And that means foreign policy, what does that mean? Uh, isolation is of stale the world's affairs. Yeah, yeah. And domestic policy, it means what's going to happen here in, the, in our country. Um, if you're a woman, they expect what? So these, these ladies and some of the others told us about the women's role in the war. They had an expanded role, right? But after return to normalcy meant what? They should go back into their homes. And many women what? Didn't want to. Didn't want to. In fact, there were some women that totally rejected society. And those women became known as flappers. So sometimes this period, there's lots of names for this period. Sometimes they're called the Roaring Twenties. Anybody heard, ever heard of that? The Roaring Twenties? So if we're going to highlight this next section, this next chapter, we could call it the Roaring Twenties. You could call it the Twenties. Sometimes it's called the Jazz Age. Why? Okay. The music of jazz became popular. So, this is a time period where we're going to see a revolution in culture in America. We already talked about a revolution. What's revolution? Change. Complete change, right? Which, which revolution do we talk about? In America. 
you guys still have some posters out on the wall. No, we didn't have any posters on the American Revolution. We did talk about the very beginning. Oh, the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution. Oh. Okay, total change in industry. This is going to be a total change in how people live and what's important. And one of the changes is how they talked. Slang. A lot of the slang words. Uh, and so one of your assignments, so let's take out our planners, make sure we're going to see a couple videos first. And then you're going to get this assignment, but let me make sure we get the assignment before we run out of time here. Read pages 752 to 764. One of the revolutions dance, how many people are dancers in here? Just two? Okay, well, we're all going to be dancers because you're all going to do a dance. We're going to do a 20s dance and you're going to form groups and and present them to everybody else. So we're going to get you out and moving. Okay? But until then... Okay? Read... 7... What did I say? 752. It's really two sections here. Read 752 to 764 and complete this slang worksheet. Now, here's the worksheet. I'm going to show it to you. And you can actually watch the. I do have a video on online on some 20 slang. Some of them might be. Some. Stay up late and sleep in. Oh, yeah. The big cheese. watch the video on slang. I don't know if we're going to have time to watch it. We do. We'll, okay? These are 20 slang right here. you got to tell me what those mean in the 20s. Okay? So you have to look those up. This second one, easy one, Yay. this is slang words you guys have. But what doesn't say on here, you need to write. And it's me. So write that down. So you're going to put six of your slang words and its meaning. Now, I notice a lot of people are putting text things. Is a text a slang word? Mm. Nope. Mm. Unless you're using it. As a slang word. What's it, what makes a slang word a slang word? I don't know. You don't don't say word. You're speaking it, okay? Oh. So if, it, if there is a text that you use that's also used as a spoken word, or spoken, then it could be slang. Okay. But if you're not using it as spoken, then what? Oh, it's not a really a slang word. Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. yeah. So six slang words of your own with its definition. Now, this bottom one, you can't miss this. The way you miss this is by not doing it. Now, so let me explain how you do it. So the first one, it says, think of a slang word where you drop part of the word off. Like they give you the example, phone. It's not, that's actually a slang because the real word is what? Telephone. Telephone, but it became phone. Yeah. But you're not thinking of one that's already, you're gonna make up your own. So you're thinking of a word that you're gonna drop part of the word and make a new slang word for it. 
And if it's different than the original meaning of the word, then you need to give the de definition. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the second part is you combine two words. And again, this is not a slang word that we already have. This is one you're inventing. Cool. So you can't miss it. The only way you can miss it is what? By not, doing By not doing it. All you have to do is combine two words and then tell me what it means. If you do that, you're going to get the points. And then the third word way is you change the part of speech it's from. Probably the biggest slang word became Google, which is actually what? What is Google? What is Google? What is Google? I don't know. When Google came out, what was it? Google. What part of speech is it? Um, verb. Now it's been used, changed to a verb, but it started out as what? Adjective. Now. A noun. It's a search engine. Google is a search engine for you to find something. That's a noun. But now people say, I'm going to what? Google something. I'm going to Google it. Then it becomes a what? A verb. So you're taking a word that was normally one part of speech and became, a you're making it into a new part of speech. Again, you can't miss it because what? You're, you're making up with it up. So you can take any word, just change and say, well, I'm going to make this a verb now, or I'm going to make this verb a noun now, and it's going to mean this. Does everybody understand that part? Because that's really how slang happens. You can't use Google because that's actually what? An actual thing. That's an actual word. I mean, I suppose you could use it down here as a slang word. Google before is a, was a noun as a search engine. Okay? And it became a verb where you're basically searching out some information. Right? Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at post war America. Uh, and we're going to look at the Roaring Twenties and how they radically changed. So here's what I want you to do as we watch different videos. I want you to list how life and culture change. So we can actually, from this, one of, one of the ways is people began to speak differently. Now where did usually slang come from? Did it come from grandma and grandpa? Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, Are they the ones giving you guys Internet. your slang? Yeah. Internet. Internet. No. Or someone just says no. something. Me? Yeah. I invented yeah, yeah. random words. I invented a slang word. Yeah. Most people is coming from the younger generation. Yeah. And slang moves much more quickly in this generation because of what? So, yeah. Because of the internet. Usually, the way it moved in our country before the internet was who had the new slang? Uh, the East Coast and the West Coast. West Coast yeah. And eventually, after several months, that slang would get where? Uh, North and South. Would get to us in the mid Midwest, in the middle part. Even like other things of culture. What else? Things like music and movies and. Uh, Clothing, that's how it kind of spread from the coast inland. They usually didn't start inland because the inland of America was tended to be what? Rural. What's rural mean? Farming areas. Okay. Here. So you have 